Peter, you are from the Asia Pacific Urban Energy Association. Here in Europe, we are hearing a lot about district heating, but I guess in your region it's more about district cooling. So, do you see parallels, and what are the opportunities and also the hurdles uh, that you see in your region? Thank you, Andrea. Thank you for having me here. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, district cooling is um, much less uh, developed in uh, in the Asia Pacific. Uh, of course, there are many district energy systems in China, for example, but in areas like Southeast Asia, uh, India, uh, there are uh, it's, it's still a new um, it's, a, it's, it's new, still a new technology or a new solution uh, that, of course, has huge potential because cooling is really. Uh, like we sa sometimes say, the, the elephant in the waiting room. Yeah. Um, so, however, there, of course, there are uh, a number of district cooling uh, systems. For example, uh, in Malaysia, there are more than 30 district uh, cooling networks. Uh, so they have kind of a, an established market uh, for district cooling. Uh, same goes with Singapore, which is, of course, a much smaller country. Uh, but they, they uh, have adapted this to cooling as well as, uh, as an, a very inefficient way of providing chilled water to, to, to its customers. So I would say that the potential is huge, mm -hmm. uh, both to the climate and uh, climate change, uh, economic growth. Mm -hmm. uh, still many you know, countries ha have, um, let's say, for example, in Thailand, only about 35% of households have ACs compared to uh, Malaysia, 80%. So that gap will be, you know, it will be uh, filled and it will be even, you know, at some point. Uh, and of course, we have the energy transition, you know. Uh, how do you meet the growing cooling demand in the region? So, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, on, on the energy transition and the growing cooling demand, I guess renewable energies and, and storage is also a big topic uh, yeah. in your region. Yeah, I think as, as you know, oh, eight or ninety percent of the countries in the region have net zero targets by 2050 or 2060. Uh, they are all working now. All the governments are working on new energy policy, how to achieve these targets, right? Uh, so uh, cooling is, of course, a, a, an important part of that, and uh, especially if you look at energy storage as a way of integrating more renewable energy. Uh, thermal energy storage systems are you know, up to 100 times cheaper than batteries. So I think that's something we try to talk about because it's not very well known. Uh, so, uh, um, and I think the momentum is, is started in the region and uh, uh, there will be huge opportunities, of course, both in, in terms of uh, develop projects, uh, but also uh, yeah, to, to contribute in the, to the energy transition in the region. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. And I think it's, it's important to make that point as well, that it's not only about district heating, it's also about district cooling, so district energy in general. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah.